All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Business Blogging for Our Beginners. I'm Ryan Wenstrup Muir, and hopefully, this morning, I'm going to give you a bit of a taste and a bit of a start about what you need to do to start blogging as someone who is uh, blogging from a business perspective. So, the first thing to think about is your platform. Where are you going to blog? Where is your blog going to live? Now, if you're a business, you probably already have your own website. So something like WordPress, which can be self-hosted, would be a good option for you. And you can integrate it into your own site quite easily. But there's also other options. WordPress can also be hosted on their own site. There's Blogger, or also sometimes known as Blogspot, which is also hosted. Tumblr, if you're using photographs, if you're mostly going to be showing um, new products or Anything that's mostly photographs or images, Tumblr is a great way to do that. Imposter, there's also tens of other platforms that you could choose to use. These are just the four kind of most popular. Now, before you even start blogging, you should be asking yourself, do you have something new to say? Uh, can you provide fresh content? Or are you just lifting stuff from your main site? If you're really only going to be using your blog, to take the same stuff you're already saying on your website and put it in a different place, then you shouldn't be blogging. People don't want to see the same ideas, the same material regurgitated over and over again. They want to see something new and something different. And your blog should be a hub of information. It should be not just a place for you to push out data, but a way to link into other things that are going on within your business. So design. You don't have to make your blog look exactly like your website, but you should be consistent with your brand. So use the same colors, the same fonts, the same tone and style that you would use on your own website or when putting out any kind of marketing materials for your business. But you don't want to be too corporate and too stuffy about it because it's a blog and you're talking to someone and it's conversational in nature. So you can keep in the tone of your business and in your brand style, but in a bit more relaxed sort of way. You want to keep it clear and uncluttered and accessible. It's very important to remember that you need to follow the accessibility guidelines. It's very easy to Google accessibility, put in your website, and it'll tell you if someone who has um, visibility needs can access the site. Uh, usually it's things such as having at least 14 point font or larger, and having the text on a white background is also helpful. But don't do things, even someone who doesn't have an accessibility problem, if you have a purple background with green cursive text, nobody can read that and it's just gonna give them a headache and it might look pretty in your mind, but it's really not useful for a blog. You can have widgets and buttons as well. And widgets sounds a bit strange, but really all it is is a way for you to incorporate other things. So you could have video brought in through a widget. Um, you could have your shopping cart, uh, you know, if you wanted people to buy things through your blog as well, that can be there too. And buttons is just a way for people to click onto other things. So you could have a button for your Twitter stream, a button for your Facebook, a button for Bolt, which I'll talk about later. There's all different things that you can have there to help people access your other social media streams. The tone. Like I said, you want your blog to be relaxed. It shouldn't be corporate and stuffy. Keep the tone the same way that you would speak to friends. So keep it very conversational and light. I'm not saying to go casual. I'm just saying to, saying to go conversational. And I, th I think there's a clear difference there. It's called social media for a reason, because it's social. And you should be friendly, and it should be fun, but it doesn't, ha it doesn't have to be stuffy, but also doesn't have to be laid back. I know that seems, maybe that seems a bit of a contradiction, but I think there is a slight difference there between the two. Include a page of info on who's writing the blog. You need to be transparent. Let people know who it is. You don't need to put down their home address and eye color and height and weight, but let people know who's writing the blog. If it's multiple people, our director of sales, our marketing manager, let people know who it is that they're listening to and going to be speaking to. Like I said, disclosure and transparency are key in social media. And don't go corporate. I think I've probably said that several times, <laughs> times now. But this is your opportunity to really personalize your business and to reach people on a different level than you would on your traditional website. So make sure you take full advantage of that. Delivery and content. Be consistent with what you post. Now, I'm not saying that you need to post every day or every Tuesday. Things happen. You're not necessarily going to be able to do, do the exact same thing every week. But try to have some level of consistency there. Maybe every Tuesday you write about a new product. That's great. And if some Tuesdays you miss it, that, you know, that happens. Uh, a great way to kind of do something like that and have it, people know what they're looking for is to do something like a wordless Wednesday. So every Wednesday you take a photograph that doesn't need to be explained by anything and it's just there and it's an easy post to do and then people know, oh, every Wednesday I'm going to see a new photo from X business. You could do whatever you want, but just make sure there's something there generally along a consistent matter. You don't have to blog every day, but you know, once or twice a week would be nice because if people go and there's nothing new there, they're going to stop coming back. 
provide email subscription options, RSS feeds, make it easy for people to read your blog. If you have an email subscription um, button where people can sign up, then that means that your blog posts go directly into their email inbox. So they don't even have to go to your physical blog page. The same thing with RSS feeds and um, having options for people then to put it in things like Google Reader. So they don't have to come to you, but they still get the content that you're putting out there. Make it easy for people to hear what you have to say. Don't spam. I think that is a great rule for anything you're doing in social media. If you don't have anything to say, don't blog. People don't want to hear, if you're trying to work on a post and you think, oh, I don't know what to write, I don't know what to say, it's going to come through in that post and people are going to shut off and they're not going to read it. Equally, if you just copy and paste something and stick it up there, again, they're not going to want to read it. And it is testamently, testament, the wrong word there. It's the same as spam, basically, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Utilize other bloggers for guest posts. So you're struggling with content, Bring in other people. You'll certainly have partners and other businesses that you work with and use their expertise to, to create content for your blog. There's certainly going to be topics that you share interest in and that your readers share interest in. And it's a great way to put content on your blog without being spammy and to work in partnership with other people. Highlight your stockists, your suppliers, events that are coming up within your field. All great ways to put content on your blog and to let people know what's going on in your business field. And don't fill your blog up with product reviews. Product reviews are great, but your blog shouldn't be just product reviews. There are you know, magazines and mechanisms out there that are just reviews, and that's great. But you shouldn't make your blog just that. And remember that if you are doing reviews, you're subject to all ASA rulings. So if you're doing social media for your business or for your company, you need to make sure and take it upon yourself to know all the latest government rulings and all the legalities around it, because you don't want to get in trouble for something you've put out there. Engagement. Respond to your readers. And that seems like an obvious one. The reason that you're having a blog and not putting out an editorial in a magazine is that you want conversation. Again, social media is called social for a reason. Always switch on your comment moderation because that will catch anything that's not appropriate to show up on your blog, but publish those comments as soon as possible. Most blog um, platforms will have a spam filter of their own and that will catch things like that, but you can moderate all your own comments so you can make sure that anything you don't want up there, doesn't appear. But in the same light, remember, you shouldn't just publish only positive comments as well, because in the real world, that's not what it is. There are lots of systems out there that you can also use things like Discus, which is a comments widget that puts in. And you can approve people. So um, if you have people that are always saying nice things or always having um, constructive criticism, you can approve them. So their comments appear automatically after the fact. And it's also really great if you're on the go, because your comments end up in your inbox. And then you can not only approve the comments from there, but you can reply in an email. So that will pop up. And the, the person will then get your reply. And you'll see when they reply. So your engagement is more increased through that. If you're linking to posts on Twitter and Facebook, engage in a dialogue on those platforms too. So if you're sharing your posts on Twitter or on Facebook, be sure to look and see what people are saying back to you on Twitter and Facebook about those posts, because you need to respond to what people are saying. And share your posts, but don't spam. Again, if you're sharing the blog post elsewhere, do not tweet out you know, five times a day, here's my new post, here's my new post, here's my new post. You can put different spins on it, and you can put different tag lines on it. And I would say, at maximum, maybe tweet out, for a, a good example, let's say three times a day, because there's different, you know, some people are in the morning, some in the afternoon, some in the evening. And as long as you put a different spin on your kind of intro line into the blog post, it's not necessarily spamming. Traffic. Obviously, you're going to want to install something like Google Analytics, which is great. It's free, and it gives you practical statistics. It'll tell you how long someone's been on the page, how they arrived on the page, how they left the page. And it'll also tell you the keywords that people searched to get on your blog, which is really helpful, because then you can take those keywords and see what types of posts are popular, to write, and then you can use them to write future posts. There's all sorts of SEO tricks that I could get into, um, but for the beginning, for the basics of it, I'll just say get your Google Analytics on there. If you want to get deeper into it, there's certainly things like meta tags and um, other SEO tricks and tips to make your blog post stand out and to get more traffic. Use things like Bolt when sharing. Um, Bolt's a really great new platform. Um, it's shortening. It shortens your URLs, which you can customize, but it also makes sticky comments and you can track. So you can have your post, and when you shorten it, it then puts a sticker with your face or your logo on it, and you can put a comment on it. So you can say to people your kind of overview of the blog post, so that way when other people share it, your thoughts are still there. And they also have a Google Analytics API key, so, even, if, so if, even when someone else is sharing that link, you're still getting the traffic back to your analytics. And the same thing, you can also share other people's links and do the same thing, and have your comments on top of that as well. Comment on the other blogs, forums, and networks. Get yourself out there. Again, don't spam. 
but go out there and talk to other people that are talking about similar things that you are. And that's how you will let people know that you're there. Comment on other people's blogs. If you want people to comment on your blog, you should comment on their blog. And of course, if it's relevant, you can always put a link to what you've done in a post. Um, for example, uh, if you have taken an image from someone off of Flickr, let them know that you've done that. Say, I've loved your image, I've used it in my post, here it is, and let them know that you have used it. And it's just, it's just good manners, really. Like I said, link when appropriate to other people. If you have read a blog post that's really great, link to it and let the person know that you've done that. There's nothing wrong with people going off your site. Again, there's SEO tricks that you can do that let, let a pop-up window pop up. So they're not actually leaving your site when they're clicking on someone else's link. And meet people, get out there. There's tons of conferences. Obviously this week is amazing. Social Media Week is great for meeting other people. But there's other conferences out there you can attend. Uh, there's a great new conference for women bloggers this spring, Cyber. Um, you can go out there, you can meet other people, meet other bloggers, and connect. And it's great to see someone in person as well and put a face to the name and the words that you've been seeing all along. So that's really just kind of an intro to blogging for business for beginners. There's obviously so many other things that I can get into, but really all you need to know is you're the expert on your business. You know your clients, you know your market, and that's all you really need to blog. You have a voice, find that voice and put it out there so everyone else can hear what you have to say. Thank you.